Oh my goodness. Hey, in case everybody at home doesn't uh, recognize you without the cowboy hat, um, everybody, this is my dear friend, Ricky Timms. Uh, I don't even know where to start with your catalog of um, accolades in the quilt world. So can I just say designer, producer, composer, awesome gentleman? Just go to my buddy and go on. Yay, let's stop there. Buddies, longtime friends and um, both stuck at home right now. And so we thought we would just kind of get together and chat and see what's going on. Absolutely. I'm glad you reached out. Yeah. So how are you really doing, my friend? Well, I mean, like everybody, I'm a small business and I know that a lot of people don't really believe that we are not a big business. And um, what transpired in my life is that, and this is my typical flow, once kind of Houston hits after in the fall, I kind of like coast and I don't have a lot of events, but I keep dyeing fabric and I keep the employees going. So I'm spending money on product and dyeing and employees looking for the whole spring. And I drove down to Tucson last weekend to do my quilt luminarium. It was a sellout. And the day before it had to be canceled. And then everything for the last, for the next uh, two and a half months at least is canceled. So all of the product that I had intended on recouping and getting the business went tanking. Now, um, just because I don't want to, I'm not, asking for a pity party. That's not where we are. I'm just saying it's really, it was challenging. And I had a panic attack last Friday because I'm like, how do you even survive this? Right. And uh, well, I pulled myself together and I've been trying to be doing things. What can I do online? And I, I told everybody I may be money poor right now, but I am time rich. There's and a bunch I of us that way. Time more than, I care, than, than I care about money. I mean, I need money to survive, don't get me wrong, but time has now been a huge gift given to me. So I've started uh, the opportunity, I've been promising for like a couple of years to do a smartphone photography class uh, for quilters in particular, but for anybody really, because I'm not talking about taking pictures of quilts, except for one bonus class that will come at the end. It's just learning to be smart with your head using your smartphone. I'm not even gonna have a fancy camera. We've all got cameras in our hands. So I'm sharing that class and people are signing up because yeah, we don't need the big boy. I oh, I, I misunderstood. Your, yeah. When I when I read the advertisement, I thought no. I was gonna be taking pictures of my smartphone. <laughs> that's that's not what it's all about? No. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have you're to gonna, sign you're up. Gonna, you're gonna you are going to use your smartphone to take pictures. Oh, that's and all different. It's the one camera. It's the one camera we carry around with us all the time. And I will tell you just some very basic practical things. I'm not, people go, well, is my camera good enough on my phone? It has nothing to do with that. It's about how can I make you be a better photographer by using your brain and looking and observing and understanding what light does and understanding what framing does and understanding dominance and emphasis and balance and all of these things that just make a better photo even if you're on vacation yeah oh that sounds that sounds really cool you know it's it's really well this is one of the reasons i love social media is we follow our friends and we follow those businesses we like to support and all of that and so you're on all of my categories um, yeah, and it's funny because I don't think of you as a small player in our little world because you've done very well for yourself, but we, most of us designers and quilt makers and stuff kind of live from check to check or event to event. And when I saw last week that yeah. you'd gotten all the way to Phoenix and found out at the door they weren't going to let you host your sold out event, it just broke my heart because I could only imagine what that would feel like. You know, to be so excited and ramped up because, you know, like I get goosebumps just thinking about events, you know, and and then you get there and you're already concerned and, and all the stuff. I'm so I'm, and I know you, you know, we talk often, not often enough, but we talk and, you know, and I know you're really interested in time and you were sharing with me, you know, how important the, the principles of time and the concept of time were. So it's really neat to hear you be so positive and hear you talking about what you can already really do with your spare time. Uh, you know, hats off to you, my friend. Well done. Thank you. Well, you know, I think we all just try to muddle through. I do think I've been really blessed in this industry to have, you know, some name recognition. Not everybody knows who I am, but at the same time, it's been a good gig. But I just think people need to realize that just because you've got, you know, a fair amount of notoriety, 
it doesn't always translate into big dollars. Right. And I, and it really isn't even about the dollars. I honestly, I, I want my business to keep going primarily because I love what I do to the point that I feel I have a gift of teaching and I have a gift to inspire. I mean, I mean that I don't want that to sound egotistical. It doesn't. It's where my heart is. My heart is to give people something they never thought possible. And I have a little nucleus somewhere inside of me that seems to do that. You are another person that does that. Quilting is so much more than making the quilt. Oh, there yeah. is a layer that's so far down that once we reach into our souls and spirits, you know, it's it's just a thing. So I just hope I can keep going. Um, and I believe that I will. Um, I, I'm putting a little band-aids or, or tourniquets on the bleeding right now and uh, and moving forward. So, so yeah, so so tell me what I can do to to help you and your people out today. Well, yeah, that's good. the other reason I wanted to reach out is I also saw you were offering that awesome online course for the photography. And, you know, when we were hanging out at the quilt show in Kansas City, that was one of the things you were talking about because I was hauling around the big camera with me, you know, and I I told you I'd got the, the little microphone cover hoping that would take better pictures if I had the sock on it. And you said that's not going to do it for the photographs much by putting a different microphone cover on and, and these things. And so... One of the things I really struggle with, I just had to do it a couple days ago again, was I wanted to take some pictures of some of my quilts. And every time I get pictures of my quilts, I just never like the way they look. They're just, either the colors are off. I'm really struggling. And I was just wondering if maybe you had a tip or two you could help me with, and then I could go out and practice and share that with folks and see if I couldn't get some better pictures of quilts and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. Are you willing to give a tip or two on quilt photography? Or? <laughs> I'll give, I mean, yeah, I'll just, I'll just brainstorm with you, tell okay. you what I know, and there's some things that may be challenging, but before, before you start firing the questions at me, I want to tell you an interesting anecdote, okay? Okay, you go. And this anecdote, is, yeah, so this is a, a very well-known photographer, very famous photographer, you know, just a fabulous photographer, is invited to a swanky dinner party. And uh, so he shows up and the hostess that's hosting the whole thing, you know, she's she's done her her bit of putting the dinner party together. And he comes in the door and she's introducing herself. I'm so happy that you could come to our gathering tonight. We're so excited. We're honored that you're here. I've seen your photos. You're an amazing photographer. You absolutely must have the most amazing camera. And so uh, he just kind of swallows for a moment and then they go and they have their dinner. And when dinner is over, he compliments the hostess and she said, he says, you know, this dinner was absolutely outstanding. It tasted fabulous. You must have the best oven on the planet. <laughs> I get Meaning, it. Meaning it's not the tool. It's not the camera. The oven is not what's creating the flavor. It's the skill of the person behind it. So it doesn't matter if you got a great camera, if you don't know how to either use it or you don't know how to frame or you don't know how to take care of it, you're not going to get a great picture. <laughs> and uh, so you <laughs> True. Know, you're not going to make a great meal just because you have a great oven. Yep. So, yeah. All right. So, so what do you want to know first? Do you want me to give you a, a couple of basics or what do you want to know? Well, um, okay, so let's maybe we can start here. When I decided to start doing all of my own filming, all of my own video creation and stuff, I went out and bought a DSLR. So I put a fancy, you know, handles and lights and stuff to make life work, but it's just a regular Canon midline camera. But the young guy at the local camera shop, he sold it to me and he said, I want you to learn how to use it on manual. So yeah. Yeah. And because I have way more control over things. Um, and so right now, I think my number one thing is I feel like I don't get the richness. Oh, I know I have. Let's let's see. Maybe we can focus on just two things. You maybe have a billion different tips you can teach, but um, I don't get the richness of the colors that I want. And I don't see the quilt stitching. OK, so. All right. So. So this is this gets. I gave you a hard one, didn't I? But let me re let let me rewind first of all to say that whoever wants to take a good picture of their quilt does not need the camera you keep holding up. If you've got a decent iPhone, 
if you've got a decent Galaxy Samsung, and I'm not talking one from necessarily 10 years ago now, I'm talking something within the last three or four years. If you've got that, you can take a decent picture. Awesome. Right? Um, but if you are using your big boy or your big girl camera, right? Um, yeah, uh, I would encourage people to to learn to shoot manual only because you have control. But the problem there is you don't know how to have control over something. You don't know what to control. And so like, there's a lot to be learned there. So many so variables. Let me make this easier. I want to keep this easier for the for the generic person that's not going to be going to to the big cameras. I'm just saying use your regular camera. Okay. Now, there's a thing, there's a thing in in both videography and in photography called white balance. And white balance is whenever you're trying to use the light that's presented to you, whether it's an incandescent light or a fluorescent light or an LED light or the natural sunlight, all of those things have different white balances. And the cameras that we have, the cameras are little computers. So they try to guess what is the white balance that's here, and they try to automatically adjust to that. Mm. I don't know if you've experienced with just like a little handheld or your phone, you might be videoing and you might move your camera here and suddenly the video turns kind of blue, oh, but yeah. you go over there and it turns kind of gold yeah. and it goes back to blue because it's reading the different light and it's trying to make an adjustment automatically. Well, if you're taking just a straight photo, that white balance is going to be calculated by the computer and it's going to take the picture with the light that it sees. I'm guessing by what I see on the quilt behind you right now that you have an incandescent light. I don't think you have a fluorescent light above your head, but you might. I but actually it looks have... golden to me. Yeah. I have L yeah. actually I put in LED fluorescent tubes over me. Um, but I've put filters over them. So there's something that's caused that. To, yeah. So, I mean, I think those are beautiful colors and they look fairly true to f what I can see. All right. Yeah. So that's good. That's really good natural light and it is making good colors. I just feel, I mean, it just feels a little golden to me and yeah. I don't know how to describe that except from experience. Yeah. And but I'll also thing. add this. I'm oh, sorry. And, and, and everybody at home, sorry, we've got a little bit of delay because Ricky's out at, in the, in the woods and I'm, I'm in California. That's my excuse. Uh, so yeah, what's funny is I first noticed that is the, if I wear a black shirt and the white catches between the black and the white, when I walk in and out, my camera was constantly freaking out color wise. Right. And, and it could also, it's being, so there's two things there. There's the iris, which is our eye, the iris that opens and closes and opens and closes. And if you are with your black shirt, are taking up a bigger part of this picture that we're looking at right now, the camera is going to try to iris open so that it can, because you're mostly black. But if you suddenly had on a white shirt, it would try to iris down a little bit. So, I mean, it's not doing that right this minute, but that's the kind of things that happen. So the reason I'm saying all of this is because what you said, I take a picture and suddenly the colors just don't seem like they're real. Yeah. And that's because of white balance. It's because the camera has made a choice and the choice was not a good one. And, and so then what do you do? Well, the hard thing here is the only way to fix that is by editing right. and to get into a program like Photoshop or Lightroom. Lightroom is my preferred Lightroom. You can change your white balance and you can slide it and adjust it. And you'd be surprised without messing with color changes. If you just change the white balance a smidgen, you can get more true to the colors that you're wanting to get on, on the project. I honestly am finding, I have an iPhone 10. Um, I don't have the new 11 yet, but on my iPhone 10, I find it does an amazing job with color. And I have a feeling that the later Samsungs and those kind of uh, phones also do really good color. I wouldn't be surprised if the big camera that you held up would be a more challenging camera to get the colors because I, and I don't know why. I, I really don't. We are really blessed to be able to have these smartphone, smart cameras, and they do a really good job. And they're getting better and better and better. The new iPhone 11 is just 
crazy. You know, it's yeah. crazy good. Well, so, so, but the colors, the problem with the colors is having with the lighting that's in the room. And, um, and so that's one. Now you asked about the quilting. Yes. The quilting showing up, right? So one of the things about the quilting it's that the picture has to be exposed really well, meaning it can't be overexposed or underexposed. Also, if you have a light source that's just pushing straight onto that quilt, it's pushing into the divots of the quilting. The reason we can see the quilting on the quilt behind you right now is because of the angle of light that is falling on the quilt. If those lights, yeah, it's coming down at an angle. Now, it's at a pretty good angle. I mean, because they come, I can see that they're coming over your head and they're coming towards me. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's over at the wall shooting straight down because that would not look pretty. It's coming kind of at an angle at the quilt like that. Right. And so we're able to see the quilting. But if you were to put a light straight on that quilt, you're, you're going to start losing stuff and you're going to get hot spots and all of this. Lighting is obviously one of the biggest deals. Now, most people are not going to be able to deal with any more light than what they've got in their room or their space or whatever. So if you're lucky to have a studio with some uh, light corrected uh, LEDs, uh, which look kind of like fluorescence, which I think is what you've got up above you, right. those work really well. But otherwise, you need to get outside. And I will tell you, the worst place to be for a photograph outside is in direct sun. Horrible. Horrible, horrible shadows, horrible harshness, doesn't look good. But on an overcast day, on a kind of cloudy day, um, it's going to soften all of that light and it's going to look pretty nice. The only thing that might happen there, and this is back to the white balance, is if the camera is trying to correct for this kind of gloomy overcast day, it might shift the colors a little bit but I bet the quilting and the overall lighting on the quilt is going to look great. You don't want any hot spots. You don't want to point a light at your quilt. And while I'm thinking of it, so I don't forget, I will guarantee you a wall quilt is far easier to photograph than a big bed quilt. Oh, right. And it has to do with even, even lighting. It's easier to light something that's smaller, easier to just get the wash over it but when you've got a big quilt on a wall that you're trying to do a flat shot of you it very likely will have these hot spots of lights and maybe darker corners in the border and it's not evenly lit it's it, it's more of a challenge to do that but if you can get it outside you can get it more evenly lit then you're dealing with breezes you can't have this quilt moving at all. Where, like, how did oh you God. see my and last you photo on, shoot? Just, <laughs> you were on my last photo shoot. You've just nailed everything I did wrong. <laughs> well, I don't know that it was wrong, but I know what your problems would have been. <laughs> I didn't even show you the photo and you guessed them all correctly. Yeah, no, that was exactly it. And I was even trying to get out in the morning. Quick little story. I was taking a picture of this beautiful petite quilt outside and I ran out for golden hour. So I got out there early in the morning to try to get away from that direct light. And it took me a while to get set up. And all of a sudden I had the sun come over a house, hit a window on the side of my house and come right back onto the quilt. And now I had the hot spot. So then I had to go get another quilt from in the house a bl with a black back on it pin it over the window to kill the reflection. It's the littlest things, but it, you, it just made such a difference. And, and wow, yeah, you're, everything you said just totally was yeah. triggering because I've done them all so incorrectly before. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll tell you, sometimes there's a reason why we use professionals to do the job because they're set up for it, right? Yeah. So I, I want to talk about, I want to talk about this. And the word, the term is called a flat shot. Okay. Okay. A flat shot of a quilt is what basically kind of what we're looking at behind you. We're looking directly onto the quilt. The one behind you is slightly skewed, and that would not be what you would want to submit to an, a, a, a quilt show. You would want it to be perfectly square. And so it's really hard. Now, that's really good there because see how the edges got really straight? Yep. Now, that's, that would still be considered a detail shot because we're not seeing the whole thing. Oh, well, uh. But getting that straight on is called a flat shot. And I've done enough uh, competitions 
that I have had to have submissions and we say we need a flat shot and we need a detail. Oh, I'll tell you the people that are standing on grandma's porch holding up quilts, you know, and it looks like Kilroy was here with their noses right here and their hands. And it's just, it's, it's not, it's not that it's not a memory shot. I mean, it'd be great someday to see that in some archive, but it's not the kind of quilt shot that you want to submit for an entry. It's not what a, a, a publisher would want if they were going to print it in a magazine. It needs to be absolutely flat. And then the position of the camera needs to be dead on center so that there's no skewing of the edges, right? Mm. No skewing. It can't be wider at the top than at the bottom. Right. It should be perfectly rectangle or perfectly square. It should not be skewed. Now, it used to be we don't want to see any cropping. Well, and that's true. We don't want to see people crop off the, the border or crop off the binding because that's okay. important. But if you are shooting it on a wall or in a house or on the side of a barn or wherever you are, I would crop it down to the edges so we only just get a little bit of the barn or a little bit of the wall preferably a lovely gray wall or taupe wall or something that's not patterned, you know, not like a patterned uh, wallpaper wall. That would be a distraction from the quilt. But the more you crop in to get that to the size that you need it to be, the better it looks. And when you start cropping it in, you can quickly tell if it's square or not. Because if you suddenly got a wider gap at the top and it gets skinny at the bottom, it isn't square. Do you just kind of use like the... Shop the framing on your phone when you're lining it up to make sure it's square in the frame. Is that how you're doing that? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your eye needs to see all of the borders need to be as square as possible. Got absolutely it. square as possible. Got it. So let me use. So, and even on the detail shot, you don't want to have some angled shot that looks, Ooh, look, that looks lovely laying on the table. You want to shoot straight on. That's what you do. Now, the third, the third thing I'll talk about, so that was the flat shot. The detail shot is also flat. The third thing is called a style shot. Most okay. quilters don't need to be doing a style shot. A style shot is what's going into the magazine. It's what's on the front cover of a Southern Living magazine. with Folded a through a ladder with a, a, a potted plant. With a, yeah, with a lemonade sitting on the side and, you know, the branch of tree coming in the side it's all it's all carefully set up right uh, that's a style shot and and to show a picture of your quilt on a bed as an entry photo it's just a no-no it's just gonna immediately be rejected it's not a flat shot okay good to know got it and the, and then the style shots are more for like the folks that are trying to do pattern covers and advertising and that stuff. And it's it's ninety nine percent photograph, one percent quilt, and it's just to catch your eye really quick on Instagram. And then you'll you'll zoom in on the quilt later on and stuff for the real detail stuff. And and I can I assume that you would uh, find that this is incredibly important even for the non professionals because we should be documenting all of our quilt work and and making memory of all of this I stuff as well. That whether, yes, whether you're, I mean, I'm saying this as if you're submitting it to a show, but that's mostly because a flat shot is still a flat shot. Right. And the, the best picture that you can have, I mean, if you're going to show it on Facebook, hey, look at the new quilt I just did. It's going to get a lot more vibrant. Wow, look at that. If you photograph it well. Right. As well as you can, I should say. Right. Right. Oh man, you are awesome. Thank you so much for giving me all this info. And you know, I'm putting it on the internet to share it with everybody, of course. That'll be great. That'll be great. I would invite people to, uh, to, to consider that. Of course it's the, my photo class. This is yeah. Plus this today is what is the day? It's one to 20th. I can't even remember. This today will go out on Monday on more. Monday, like the 22nd yeah. or whatever. Are you already sold out or do you still have some spaces? I'm not sold out yet, um, but my class starts on the 26th, which is a Thursday. Okay. So a week from was yesterday. So if anybody's interested, but here's the thing. I specifically took a nine-week class and smashed it into four and a half weeks. So we'll do a Thursday and a Sunday and a Thursday and a Sunday. So two lessons a week rather than once a week. Right. So we can be done in five weeks and I can offer the class again. 
if, right. if somebody's interested in signing up for the future. I, I need to manage how many students I've got. And uh, so I don't want to have, you know, uh, an abundance of students that makes it challenging. Will you have so, a wait uh, list of but students? Yeah, but even, will, will you be able to get the when? folks that see this and get them on the next round of classes? 100%. Yeah. Right. Thank you. 100%. And I still have openings right this minute. I have, absolutely have openings. And uh, we didn't mention this, but I do a 52 week photography class that starts the first Sunday of every January. And that registration is always at the end or middle of November to the early part of December. We do registrations. I try to get people registered around by the 10th of December, but it doesn't start till January. And it's 52 weeks. I mean, it's a long time. So this is a nice short little bump of just, let's just learn how to use our brains and be smart with our, our phones that we've got. So yeah. I'm excited about that. Well, thank you again so much. It's, it, I'm really excited. I, you know, I feel for me as a professional quilt making artist, it's important to have other forms of art to be practicing and learning. That is my creative place, my safe place, my experimentational place. Um, unfortunately this year I chose cameras or last year I chose cameras. And, and so the, I, but I also needed to be filming and taking pictures of myself every day. So the learning curve had to be quick because I'm trying to keep up with myself. But I also uh, am a strong believer that with every day we can improve. So the quilt I made yesterday was better than the quilt I made the week before. The photos I will take next week following yeah. your assignment will be better than the ones I took last time when you watched me take those terrible photos. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. So, but, but here's the thing. And one of the things I love about photography is because if I'm going to make a quilt, I'm going to spend anywhere from a day to a month to six months to a year or whatever on that one quilt. Yeah. I can take one photo in a matter of a split second. Yeah. And this allows me to be an artist and let me compose this and what's wrong with it. Let me compose that and do that. If I'm composing a quilt, it takes a long time. And then you go, man, that was a lot of work for it didn't really turn out. Right. I believe that photography will make you a better designer as a quilter. I really love photography. It's made me a better artist in so many ways. But I am I use it a lot. I mean, I am constantly, every time I raise my camera, I am thinking like an artist. I'm not just going point and shoot. I am right. going point and shoot, but there's a lot going on in here before that thumb ever hits the trigger. You know what the best blessing for me was when I bought the cameras and started, because I always, you know, I bought the cameras to be making it fun here in the studio teaching quilting, but I love nature. I love surfing. I love wildlife. So I've been trying to use the cameras for the hobby outside and taking photos and stuff. Well, fortunately, you know, my wife for years had talked about how much she loves fall. I, she'd always say, I love fall. I love the colors. I just, it just, the lighting is so special. And I missed it. I have missed it. We've been married 20 plus years. I've missed it for the last 20 plus years. This year, I walked outside one day with the camera in my hand and I was like, oh, look at the sky. There's more purple today. And look at the, the clouds are more rich. And I just started getting real. And so now I really appreciate, like maybe this is what you were saying. I stop for a moment and I look longer and I take in more. Mm -hmm. And I walk away more mm -hmm. appreciative to the surroundings of beauty around me. And golly, maybe we should we should wrap it up with that today. You know, a lot of folks are a little nervous right now. A lot of folks are turning to the internet for things to do and ways to be creative. So uh, let's encourage everybody to visit rickytims.com and check out your photo courses you're doing. And that's where they're loaded, list, listed, right? At rickytims.com or are they somewhere else also? Uh, my photo course, the smartphone course and my photo course are at photoclass4u.com. That's right. And the word for is F-O-R. So photoclass4u.com. And U is also spelled out. It's not for you. Got it's F-O-R-Y-O-U. And Got that's where those are. God, I'll make sure uh, I get that information up. written so that people that's get it right. Uh, great. So... Um, you know what? It's great always talking to you, Rob. And um, I just, you know, to, for everybody that's out there, safe, uh, snuggle down, uh, love your family, love what you do, find time to, you know, comfort yourself and inspire yourself. Um, these are strange times we're certainly living in. I've certainly never experienced anything like this, but I don't think anybody on earth has ever experienced anything quite like what's going on. And I, I'm staying positive and hopeful. 
Um, and I think that we all, all need to do that and yeah. stick together and love each other. Amen, brother. Love you. Thank you very much for being here and sharing so much of your awesome knowledge with us. Awesome. Okay, Bubba. All right, man. Okay, be safe. We'll talk to you real soon.